Hi, this is Paragon TV. I'm Randall Paul. We're here with Dave Young, and this is the Wealth Management Show. It's often been said, Dave, that uh, the wisest investor buys a good stock and just holds it. How do you feel about that very broad generalization at, at Paragon? Um, I, I think that's a very simplistic way to invest. I've, I've never trusted the markets enough to just put my money out there and buy and hold. I, I call it buy and hold and hope and pray. <laughs> Um, you know, because the most difficult thing in an investment, it's not that hard to decide when to buy, but it's hard to decide when to sell. And, and that's kind of the, the, the cop out, I think, with buy and hold, is you just buy it and you hold it and you hope it all works out. There's a, there's a lot of fantasy about it, too, as far as it's almost like a religious com conversation. I mean, you've got your buy and holders who believe that, you know, by heck, this is the only way to invest. And then you've got your active managers who think, no, you're, you're nuts. You know, there, this is a much better way. Why would you buy and hold? And, and, I mean, I've seen academic studies that show that buy and hold is the only way to invest. I've seen academic studies that, that show that active management is the only way to invest. So it's, it's, it's not cut and dry. This last year, 2011, which religion would have won? Unfortunately for me, <laughs> buy, buy and hold was the, was the place to be this year. What was going on? Well, Whenever you've got a situation where you've got a, a steadily trending market, active management will usually outperform. And when you've got a back and forth market, buy and hold will often outperform. And so, for example, you know, we came into this year and uh, we had a rally up into April. And then from April, the market changed direction by 4% 4, 4 or more every single month until September. Hmm. So it was just back and forth, back hmm. and forth, back and forth. So if you're an active manager, every time the market's starting to trend up, you're repositioning and you're adjusting to capitalize on that just in time for it to roll over and go back the other way when all of a sudden you've got to come out of your positions and you've got to become defensive. And then just in time to roll back in and see it go back up. And then just in time to roll out and see it go back down. And so whenever you've got this back and forth whipsaw action, it makes it much, much more difficult for an active manager. You're not going to lose a lot of money, but you're not going to make a lot of money in, in that kind of a pro approach probably as an active manager. Yeah, you, you're, you're going to capture probably, you know, I mean, it, it depends on how proficient you are at it. Uh, some people can get really chopped up. Uh, but if you, if you can capture 75% of the move by doing that, then, then, then it, it's, a, it's a, you know, that's a good thing. But what, what people miss is our track record. If you, if you go on our website and look at our track record, We've outperformed buy and hold significantly over the years by being active, uh, but not every single year. I think there's been four, I'd have to check, so don't hold me on this, but I think there's been four years where we actually underperformed the buy and hold approach uh, out of the last 13. And your average returns over those years have been pretty good, haven't they? As I recall, it was something like 13%. 12 and three quarter percent net yeah. of fees. And again, with that, uh, I can't really go into that on the show without documentation, so sure. I, I would have you know, recommend people go back to our website and look at the actual hard numbers. But yeah, they, they, our, our returns have been exceptional. Before we end this discussion, could you tell me what the benefits usually are for a buy and hold strategy versus an active trade strategy? Yeah, well, you, usually a, a buy and hold strategy is much, much more simple. I mean, you just buy it and hold it and, and forget about it. But to me, I mean, the reason I'm not sold on buy and hold is I'm not willing to just blanketly suffer the, the huge drawdowns that you, you potentially can with buy and hold. I mean, if you look at the 2000-2002 bear market, uh, the S&P was down, I, I believe, about 45%. The NASDAQ was down close to 80%. Fast forward to 2008, you know, and we, we had that huge downturn uh, in the S&P. Uh, I think it was down around 36%. And while you, you can't guarantee that you're going to avoid that using an active strategy, I just like to at least have the feeling that I'm having a fighting chance that I'm just not riding over the cliff and saying, oh, well. And so I, I think the reason I, I prefer the active management is because it gives me a sense of having more control over my portfolio and more ability to attempt to mitigate the downside risk, whereas with buy and hold, you're just, you're just taking it as, as it is. Thanks a lot for that answer. Uh, we'll talk more about this, no doubt, in coming sessions. Thank you for being with us at Paragon TV. See you next time.